Natural basis. Terrible. Um, natural basis is. Right, so in the clean problem, natural basis is um, a m, which one's a e a m, which is the plane wave basis. Natural basis for the clean problem. And I would like to make a basis choice so that when epsilon n is, when all epsilon are zero or uniform, that uh, the problem becomes trivial. So to implement this, I want to write my xn as e to the i k n. Well, some rotation matrix. We'll write a n b n, and you can figure out that this rotation matrix is e to the i k n minus i k n e to the okay. so the idea is that when you look at the products of transformations Okay. The idea is that everywhere we're going to insert, just make sure in all orders, okay, and so on and so forth. Um, well, I would like to insert something here to make, again, you know, basically I want to go away from the original t's to the rotated t's, uh, right, which I'm going to call little m. And you'll see the reason. So we'll, we'll come back to the issue of symmetry of the transfer matrix shortly. It's not something I have much to say about. It's not very important. Right, so the, the, the idea is to then, the product of these is one. The idea is to sandwich uh, this way. And so, whoops, I screwed up. The ordering of these guys, I think. One minus one. That matters tremendously. Um. Yeah, okay. So, so the end goal of this basis change is this result. So you can see that if there is no disorder, by design, the transfer matrix is trivial. Okay. So the short answer to your question is that I can I think some people call it the gauge freedom because I'm only looking at a product of things. So I can insert whatever resolutions of identity I want to change individual matrices and manipulate their uh, bases. Um, this is the one that's sort of uh, well suited to doing weak disorder theory. The idea here is that we're, we're going to look at you know, essentially transmission to this to a lot of through a lot of chains, and the idea is that we assume something about the uh, distribution of transmission matrix eigenvalues uh, up to a certain distance n minus one. We're going to add one more site and ask what kind, how, how does this distribution evolve? I mean, I should say actually the there was a lot. You know, what I'm doing now is going to give us a continuum description, which goes by so there's a big reference, RMP, by B. Nakar. Um, this is called DMPK formalism. And it's sort of aimed at doing weak disorder and getting to the continuum regime. Um, but there were many, many 
prior works on this. Um, I think Landauer is the person who did sort of, who noticed important wrinkles first in the 70s. These wrinkles were rediscovered and amplified by uh, Anderson, Thales, Abrahams, and Fisher. This Montlum refers to this as alcohol, tobacco, and firearm paint. 82. Um, and so the basic idea in all of this sort of a, 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 a work is to consider distribution of conductance to the system and sort of actually compute it. And so the appeal of doing, the, doing it in a weak disorder uh, regime is that you can actually go to the continuum. Limit and, and still compute everything. And as I said, some of these results have appeared in the literature from very different perspectives. Okay, so here's now the calc. So th this is the set. This is all the setting up that we need. Here's the calculation. The calculation is to ask, as I already hand waved, we would like to consider how the uh, uh, the uh, com com composite transfer matrix, how it evolves when you just increase the length of the chain by one side. Okay? And the idea is that we'll then take continuum limit. We'll call this here. No, 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 no. Hmm? Yes, everything is finite. There's no infinity in physics. So. First reference, B knocker. Uh, I can write it, but I'll almost certainly misspell it. There's two Ks someplace, and there's four E's or three E's, I'm not sure. Carlo uh, Binaka. I'll, I'll have to post some kind of notes. So. Right. so again, this is one of these things where the math is straightforward but deeply satisfying. Um, so I'm going to indulge a little bit. I only have five minutes. I think it's, good. Uh, it's good to end on a muscular note. Um, so, so one can do, look, these are two by two matrices. The language of two by two matrices is poly algebra. So we can do these kinds of products uh, uh, quickly in, in our sleep. So the most important thing is that this object will be zero if there's no disorder. So we will collect terms by powers in disorder, and there's only two at this level. So I think in the interest of not running out of time before. So everywhere you see eta's, there should be hyperbolic functions. And everywhere you see phases, there are regular trigonometric functions. So this is phi n plus 2 kn. And this I will define the capital phi n. Matrix minus i car eta n e to the 2 i k n. Oh, I don't know if I can fit everything. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to skip the rest of this equation. And I'll just give you, I'm sorry, just. The important thing is that, so, right, so one gets an expression to order epsilon and one to epsilon squared, and that's all there is. That is exact. And you should appreciate that, you know, this is linear in epsilon. You multiply two m's together, that means that at worst you're going to get epsilon squared. So from that, now if you start, now we're going to start making small epsilon assumptions, we want to, you know, milk this parameterization, which I covered up. We would like to milk, we would like to describe what's happening in terms of this parameterization. Notice that the eigenvalue of the transfer matrix, actually maybe I should have said that earlier, the eigenvalues of the transfer matrix actually tell you um, 
about transmission because you can see that they will be decaying. Right, so what, what this is is that now it's not to the nth power, it's just lambda plus of the full matrix. So the decaying amplitude for transmission is actually encoded in the eigenvalues. You actually want to know about the distribution of eta's. So from site n to the n plus 1, the uh, eta's evolve in the following fashion. Now this is important, so I will not skimp any details here. Sign k plus e n squared cosine phi m n cotangent cosine phi plus 1 Take this little lump together and call it F. And there's a similar expression for the phases. But we actually expect the phases to be uh, randomized, so I'm not going to write out the equation, but one can work it out all the same. So we expect, right, basically after a large number of scatterings, the phase of the transfer matrix will be randomized. So we expect the probability distribution of phi to be 1 over 2 pi, completely flat, random. Incidentally, I mean, this big review of Dinecker, I think, is focused on random matrix theory. So this is sort of the ram randomization of phases, I think, is, um, um, is quite generic. We expect that always. Now, this is perhaps the most important equation after the definition. Again, it's self-evident if you've done this kind of uh, um, step net statistics. The idea is that given an equation such as this one, what do we say about probability distributions? Well, just follow on those two definitions. Right, so this, this depends on n, but these are dummy variables, right? I'm just going to label them to make it as, you know, as connectable okay what's what so this is the distribution of epsilon so the epsilon that shows up here is epsilon n so let me be consistent right is that just against your states then? yeah well no that, that's the disorder uh, distribution Yes, density of states, but essentially the, when we define this model, right, the on-site potentials were distributed in some way. Right, so in principle, if I wanted to be fancy, I could say, well, maybe the disorder gets stronger as you move to the left of the, or to, to the right of the chain. This itself would be a non-trivial function, but we're not doing that. We're just saying that the, the system is actually homogeneous. But this is sort of a um, just a statement of Right. If you have the if you have the relationship for a single realization, just a minute, for a single realization to go from here to here is just a matter of definition. But it's important. Yeah. Yeah. Is it different for different ends, or is it? No, it's the same distribution. That's right. It's, it's an independent distribution, but it's right. it's a box distribution, for instance. Right. So why do we have Which coefficient? Well, okay, if you don't like, actually, maybe minus w over 2, okay, that's, that's the distribution. Basically, the value of epsilon n on each side is a random function, i oh, sorry, <laughs> random number between some variables. That's not the difficult part. The difficult part is going to be to do this integral from this equation. Yes, two more minutes, is that okay? I think the organizer is starting to <laughs> organize. <laughs> anyway, so how do we do this? This is trivial. In principle, in practice, one has to gather up terms. So we have to do this integral by resolving this delta function. So if you look at this equation, it's all perturbative of an epsilon. So we just fling it to the, the other side. This becomes minus epsilon n sine 
sine k minus epsilon n squared, little f. Now, there are actually going to be high order terms, which I'm going to ignore. Right? The high order terms will come because this depends, sorry, this depends on eta n, right? And I'm, now I want to say that all of this will depend on n plus 1. Well, no, n. Anyway, this is the answer. And there's also a Jacobian for this mapping, for this equation. And the Jacobian is 1 minus, that's the easy part, so let me just write it, 1 minus epsilon squared if I d epsilon, uh, the, the eta, and the reason for that is that this is not dependent on eta. Right, so you only get a contribution for this. So actually, two more minutes. I, I, I want to get to the final answer. Um, so it's important that this is sort of a simple average. There's no distribution because we assume that it would get randomized. That can be checked. So this average just kills off. Right. So then the idea is that right. Then the idea is that we take this term and we tell or expand that. N plus one plus epsilon n minus epsilon n squared, right? So that becomes that object, right? And then we expand this term to p of epsilon n plus 1 plus epsilon plus epsilon squared, right? And then we have, by bringing this to the left-hand side, Here, right, we have p of n plus 1 minus p of n, so this becomes sort of the derivative with respect to the physical space. And because I'm sort of running out of time, or I'm out of time, let me just write down the answer. You can see a lot of derivatives with respect to eta. So eta is sort of the conductance. Um, so if you collect, collect terms, you find that the answer is 4 sine squared k. This is an interesting looking differential equation. Again. It's always fun and sometimes it's interesting. Okay. Now, what's interesting is that the solution, so if eta becomes large, right, and again, we think of large n limits, right, as we go further and further into the chain, um, large eta limit, we can ignore, we, we can basically let uh, signs to be, so hyperbolic signs to be exponentials, I'll, I'll have to come back and do this properly next time to, to discuss the, so this coefficient, if you think of it loosely speaking, as a diffusion constant. Whoops, let me just write it out, just dp squared. Okay. So that would be a diffusion equation. But this is a biased diffusion equation. So what you find is that the probability distribution <coughs> takes a form e to the minus eta minus. So n plays the role of, the role of time. Okay. And so what you see is that as you sorry, this is n. So as n goes to infinity. Eta actually grows as n, and um, well, we'll discuss next time how this is. First of all, it's consistent with localization, but it's also consistent with this being a, uh, effectively a broad distribution for which mean conductance is uh, not represented of typical conductance. Okay, let's finish here.